One of the things that we start people off here in this process, we call it the salt sugar test. And it's a quick process by which you put just a few grains of salt, a few grains of sugar on your tongue. But there's something very, very important uh, that you have to be careful of. And Jim, you have done this salt sugar test with literally tens of thousands of people. And in a small, small percentage of them, it can have a alarming effect. And take us through what our audiences need to do to be careful. Well, a long time ago, I, I had somebody drink some water and put salt in their tongue and they got real shaky and dropped to the floor and started flopping around like a fish out of water. And I'm asking Dr. B, what in the world's going on? And he explained to me that they were so dehydrated, so salt efficient when they put the salt on the tongue, that it changed the molecular structure of the cell. So the best way to explain it to you is if you take a bucket of water and you throw a brick into the bucket of water, it creates havoc and it splashes all over. Well, when you put the salt on the tongue, sublingual goes right into the cell. It changes the molecular structure. So the red blood cell, erythrocyte, can't hang on to the oxygen. So the person just, they just go down. It only lasts for two or three minutes, but people panic and they want to call an ambulance or do whatever. It doesn't happen that much. So if a person puts salt in their tongue and they feel lightheaded, dizzy, or nauseated, they quick drink some water to wash that salt off of their tongue and it'll stop this process. But if you put the salt into water and, and put sugar in it and stir it up, they can take it this way and it won't bother them. So some people that are in have congestive heart failure, if they put salt on their tongue and it's creating havoc with these cells and their heart isn't working all that good for starters, the muscle itself, and then you start screwing up this, the blood that's going to it and it's not getting the oxygen it needs, then it feels like there's an elephant or they're not doing so good. So anybody that's got congestive heart failure or renal failure, let's stay with congestive heart failure, they can't really put the salt or the sugar on their tongue because the sugar will have the same effect. It changes that molecular structure. So I suggest to them that they take sugar water and salt and you sip it and take it. It'll have no effect on them whatsoever at all. And somebody in renal failure, they generally don't have a problem putting the salt on their tongue or the sugar just a little bit to see that they need a little bit more. But people in renal failure have to stay away from salt. But they put the salt in their food and as their, their urine increases, like they restrict them to 32 ounces of water of liquid. And if they drink water and they measure the input and the output, as the output increases, then you keep increasing the water and then you add the salt. And most of the time, from what I've found, 85% of the people in renal failure, their kidneys come back online. Matter of fact, it's in one of Dr. B's books, for testimonials where there was a lady that their kidney shut down and had a transplant was losing it and when she started doing the water and salt stopping the soda and the chocolate her kidney came back online so i hope that i addressed i answered your question for what you're talking about and here's one i forgot to mention that if somebody drinks water and goes into shock traumatic shock because some people if they never drink water water's poison they could also have this effect not feeling good, get very sick or maybe lay down. So if somebody has this reaction, either with water, salt or sugar, have them drink, have them clean whatever was on their water, on their tongue. Obviously if it's water, they don't need to do anything. But if you get something frozen or even a cold can of soda and you put it on the right side of the neck and you keep it there, Frozen something frozen is best you keep it on the right side of the neck until you got you can't stand it move it to the left side and Dr. B explained this to me that it hits the reset button. It's like The brain thinks it's going to freeze to death for it forgets about all its other problems cancer pain everything and it concentrates on survival So you put the ice on the side of the neck and it hits the reset button It forgets about everything just concentrates on surviving and everything starts over. Actually, you'll feel better than you ever have. Anybody that's ever been sick, if you notice that if you stick your head out the window, you feel better, or if you get into cold, you feel better. Well, that's why, and that's what this ice on the side of the neck does.